I'm going to start soldering up a resistor board for my LEDs. Small board. I have six 150 ohm resistors. I have six 300 ohm resistors. So what I'll do is I'll start soldering up an array on this small PCB board and I'll have six 450 ohm resistors that'll feed into my LEDs. I have my resistor board built for the LEDs and all these yellow leads will connect to the common lead on the bicolor LEDs. Now I set the lengths of these leads, they're about two feet. I don't know how much length I'm going to need, but I thought it would just be so much easier to get these wired up now and then cut them to fit once I get underneath the bench work. I'll set my meter to ohms. Now all the resistors share a common, a common ground. Four hundred fifty ohms. Four hundred fifty ohms. Four hundred fifty ohms. Oops. Four hundred fifty ohms. Four hundred fifty ohms. Four hundred fifty ohms. So those resistance values will set the current. At about 11 milliamps through the LED, the LEDs will be bright enough to be easily visible, but it won't be driving them so hard that they're liable to burn out. So I, I think in the long run, this will probably be a good move. I'm getting ready to solder up some LED assemblies. And I have, I've been using yellow for the common lead when wiring up the resistor board. I'll use green for the green LED, red for the L red LED. I have some heat shrink cut up and I have six bicolor LEDs. What I'm going to do is solder leads onto the LED legs. Now the center lead is the common. The long, the second longest lead is red and the shortest lead is green. So what I'll do is uh, I'll solder up these short leads, yellow, red, green, put some heat shrink over the solder joints and then these LEDs with the pigtails on them will be ready to install in the fascia. I want to tin these leads before soldering, before soldering the leads to the LEDs. So put a little bit of flux on these LED legs. Take my iron, I get a coat of solder on these on these LED legs, which makes it much easier to solder once I'm ready to attach the wires. And I'll do the same with the LED leads, the uh, these colored wires I'm attaching to the LED legs. They need to be tinned. I'm going to want to put a little bit of extra solder on here. That way, when I attach these leads to the LED, I don't actually have to apply any solder. You can see there's a little 
solder blob right there, and that's going to be plenty of solder. So now what I want to do take this lead just heat it up and this is trickier than you might think And now I have this I have this wire attached to the LED leg. And I'll repeat that process for the other two. All right, you can see I have the three leads soldered to the LED. Slip the heat shrink down. Over these solder connections. And this insulates the shot solder connection, but it also strengthens it. Okay. So now I'll use my heat gun. And let me turn this turn this LED so when I use my heat gun I don't blow everything off the table here all right and now I'll install this last sleeve little bit of a tight fit. My selection of heat shrink is not the best. Slide that down in place. You rotate this. You can see better. I try to hold these wires in alignment. I'll slide this piece of heat shrink down as far as I can. That's pretty good right there. And See our assembled LED. It's ready to place in the panel and then connect up with the circuitry. So I'll continue on with the rest of the LEDs in the same fashion. Well, I have the six LEDs ready to install. And these are the LEDs that are going to indicate the normal or diverging route for my turnouts on the peninsula. So it's now time to go ahead and put those in the fascia. Now the LEDs are just a press fit in the panel. I drilled the holes to, I can't remember what side, I think they're eighth inch. And the LEDs just press into the holes. Well, I have the balance LEDs wired up to these terminal blocks. You know, once I get these new connectors for the tortoise machines, I'll be able to run the rest of the wires to the LEDs. This, this one LED on this side connected to this terminal block and the remaining five connected to these two terminal blocks. I'm going to try to explain how I wired my tortoise switch machine for LED lights. I'm going to try not to make this too convoluted because there are several variables involved here on how you can do this. One thing to get out of the way right away 
is pins two, three, four is a switch. Five, six, seven is a second switch. So what I'm going to describe can be used with either one. It can be used with two, three, four, or it can be used with five, six, seven. That's up to you. But for this description, I'm just going to use two, three, four. Now, pin number four is the lead that's common between the switch positions. And pin number four is where I bring in 5 volts DC to the switch machine to power the LEDs. Now, pin 2 or pin 3, this contact arm here, will change between pins two and three depending on the position of the switch machine. Now in this position, I'll set my multimeter to ohms. Got pins one, two, three, four. Put the switch machine in this position, pin 2 is making contact with pin 4. Now if I change the switch machine, to the opposite position, you'll see that pin 3 is making contact with pin 4. Now for my normal routes, I connect a green side of the bicolor LED to the pin that's making contact with the 5 volt supply. And again, this is it gets a little bit convoluted because depending on how you have the switch machine mounted, whether this way, and you notice the arm moves to the right, or if you have it mounted this way, now the arm is moving to the left, will determine what your normal route is. So you're going to have to have a little flexibility here and, and just try to stay with me. The important thing is pin 4 is the 5 volt supply. Pin 2 or pin 3, depending on how the switch is thrown, is going to make contact with the 5 volt supply on pin 4. So once you have this tortoise machine installed on your layout, you have it set for the normal route, then go and check your resistance values on your switch machine. And when you have continuity, here's your 5 volt supply, here you have continuity on pin 3, then you would connect the green side of the LED to pin 3. And then you would connect the red side of the LED to pin 2. Now if you're going to be doing more than just the most basic electrical work on your layout, you almost have to have a multimeter. But you don't need to have an expensive fluke multimeter. There are lots of multimeters out there, and it's just an invaluable tool for wiring your layout. I bought some of these Acculite snaps for the tortoise machines. Got these off eBay. Going to change these out and get rid of the connectors I have on the tortoise machines now. Now that I have the Acculite snaps, it's time to get under the bench work and finish wiring up those tortoise machines. Now I have the 5 volt output of my power supply 
connected to this terminal block. Now the common wire, there's just one common right here, one common out, and then there's six five volts out. Well, each five volt output will go to a tortoise machine. And the common output goes to the resistor board. Now this is the common lead from the power supply. It's connected to the resistor board and the six 450 ohm outputs from the resistor board go to my terminal blocks. And you can see the the yellow wires there all go on the top row of the terminal blocks. Now in the bottom row of the ter terminal blocks, all those leads go to individual LEDs. In this case, it's six, five, four, three, and so on. Now in this case, this is my 5 volt input from the power supply. This green wire goes to the green wire on the LED and this and this red wire goes to the red leg of the LED. Now I turn on the power supply And you can see all my LEDs are green. And so the switches are all set to the normal route. They all pass straight through. Now if I set one of the switches to the diverging route, the LED changes to red, and you can see the switch machine has moved the turnout to the diverging route where the path is now this way. If I switch it back, And you can see the lights are all green again. I think I'm going to end this one here. I have the LEDs functioning on my fascia for the peninsula. But thanks again for watching. I hope you join me next time.